Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to be performing Cisco Packet Tracer Activity 3.2.1.7, titled Configuring VLANs. To begin, we'll go ahead and get our Packet Tracer Activity open, and the instructions on the side. I recommend just keeping this open for at least the addressing table. And we can see we have our pre-configured network set up here for us. We have VLAN 10 set up, so we have PC1 and PC4 on VLAN 10, PC2 and PC5 on VLAN 20, PC3 and PC6 on VLAN 30. And we can see that although they're on the same VLANs, they're actually separated by switches for this uh, connectivity. So a little bit about the packet tracer activity, the background reads, VLANs are helpful in the administration of logical groups allowing members of a group to be easily moved, changed, or added. This activity focuses on creating and naming VLANs and assigning access ports to specific VLANs. So we're going to go ahead and get started with part one, which is viewing the default VLAN configuration. And we're going to begin with switch one. So we'll jump straight into the command line interface, and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing in here. And we can just go ahead and run a show VLAN brief, just like that. And we can see that the default VLAN is VLAN 1, and because it's the default, it has all ports assigned to it. Um, we don't have any other VLANs created other than the basic default VLANs. So we are going to go ahead and close that for a moment. And we're going to show how PCs can ping one another as long as they share the same network. And so this is referring to the network address and subnets. And so to begin, we're going to start with PC1, command prompt, and we're going to ping over to PC4. PC4's IP address is right here. And we can see that we can ping directly across like that. So we do the same thing for PC2 pinging to PC5, and then PC3 pinging to PC6. And we'll notice that we can ping those pairs together. But if we try to ping, for example, PC1 to PC5, if we try to cross like that, we'll see that the ping fails. So let's go ahead and show that by pinging from PC1 to PC5. So all four ping packets are going to timeout because we are on different networks. We have the same subnet, but different network addresses. So we'll go ahead and close that. We've seen what we need to. As we go through the instructions, we have a question here. What benefit will configuring VLANs provide to the current configuration? Um, VLANs, in a situation like this, will provide basically higher performance. Um, we'll be able to monitor and control bandwidth by isolating high traffic devices, for example. So this will, in turn, improve network reliability to all the other devices and allow data control to those high traffic devices so we can kind of limit how much traffic they can actually utilize over a network and reduce their overall bandwidth consumption. And by doing that, reduce their impact on the network and allow the other devices a little bit more bandwidth amongst themselves that way. Um, an additional benefit to VLANs, especially in a configuration like this, is that we have smaller network segments. So we have a fewer amount of broadcast traffic t uh, on each segment. So instead of broadcasting from one device across every single device, we'll end up broadcasting only to our VLAN matches. 
um, and VLANs also help to improve network and device security when another device can't just hop on here and you know connect to any of these they'll have to be match the VLAN and network correctly and our next step we are going to do part two configure VLANs step one says create the following VLANs names are case sensitive so on switch one we're going to begin configuring these VLANs So we will go into our privilege exec mode and then straight up to our global and begin with VLAN 10. And then we need to give it a name of faculty slash staff. And again, case sensitivity and spelling are very important here. They'll need to match exactly between switches. Now that we have VLAN 10 set up, we can actually hop directly over to VLAN 20. We don't have to exit. And give it a name of students. Hop to VLAN 30. Name guest default. And set up VLAN 99. Name management and native. No spaces. So we've got those at least set up. They've been created. They just haven't been configured for anything yet. So now we'll go ahead and exit out of there and do another show VLAN brief. Go ahead and open this back up. And now we can see that we have these VLANs created. So we'll need to go ahead and do the same thing on switches 2 and 3. Remember that the names are case sensitive and also spelling sensitive. So be very careful setting those up. I'm going to pause the recording to try to keep the recording as short as possible for this and we'll be right back once we have configured switches 2 and 3 with those VLANs. Alright, so I've got those set up. Step 4 says to verify the VLAN configurations. So here you can see my commands to create those VLANs. We'll go ahead and come back out and take a look to make sure that those VLANs have been created. And this is a good time to double check your capitalization and spelling. All right, so switch two looks good. Take a look at switch three. Switch 3 looks good. And we'll move on to part 3, assigning VLANs to ports. So step 1 is to assign VLANs to the active ports on S2. And we'll assign the VLANs to the following ports. VLAN 10 will be assigned to Fast Ethernet 011. So let's get back into switch 2 and start configuring these. So we're going to go to Fast Ethernet 011. We want to type switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 10. And this next command is sometimes optional, but it's never a bad idea to, just to make sure. You do a no shut to make sure that interface is enabled and active. All right. And then we want to set fast ethernet 018 to VLAN 20 go ahead and give it the no shut command and then we want to configure 06 for VLAN 30 
right, so that looks good. We'll do the same thing over on switch three. I'll try to run through this quickly. see that I'm skipping those no shut commands. Like I said, they are sometimes optional, especially if those um, interfaces are already up. Um, six is going to be on VLAN 30. All right. And once that's done, we should see that we have lost some connectivity. Before, we could ping across from 1 to 4, anything that looked like it was in the same network. So 1 and 4 could ping, 2 and 5 could ping, and 3 and 6 could ping. So we want to verify that we have lost connectivity, so we'll ping from PC1 to PC4, which we already saw worked once. And we'll see now that it's going to time out. And the reason it's timing out is because trunking is not yet set up between switches 1 and 2 and switches 1 and 3. If we look at the configuration, we don't have trunking set up to transmit between the switches now. We have the VLAN set and the interface is set, but we need to set up trunking to enable that full connectivity. So I believe that covers everything for 100% completion. Um, I'm going to go ahead, and if you want to do this, you can configure trunking. And so to begin, we see that we're on gig interface 1 here. So I'm going to hop on to S2. And we're going to go ahead and get out of the interface and do G1, switch port, mode, trunk, and then switch 3, get out of that interface, and this is connected via gig port 2, kind of the same command, switch port, mode, trunk. So those are set, and we'll see that we've lost total connectivity between our switches. So we've set switches 2 and 3 for trunking, but switch 1 isn't really set up for trunking yet. So we'll come into switch 1, and on G01, we will set it up for trunking. And then G02, we will do the same command. And that should restore connectivity between our VLAN matches. So if we run that ping from PC1 again, we will get a reply. So that's a little bit more than the packet tracer actually required in the instructions for completion, but without that trunking, you're not going to get communication across. So that covers everything it looks like for this packet tracer. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below, and I will see you in my next video.